Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to this Kisoft Webinar on Highlights in Kisoft Release 2018 Beta. I would like to pay your attention that we have another web, uh, webinar that is planned in summer, 7th of June, where we actually go a bit more detailed on the new features uh, in the release. So today our goal is uh, to show you what's new in the beta version, which functionalities, and especially uh, where you can find these new features in order to uh, test them, evaluate them, and of course, give us some feedback. My name is Ilya Tsikur. I am responsible for technical sales at Kisoft AG, and we will start now the web demonstration. In Kisoft 2018 uh, beta, we have quite a lot of new nice features. Um, I will take care of the uh, of the gear part, and beside me, uh, Mr. Langhart, our bevel gear expert, is also here, and he will afterwards take over uh, and also show you some new features uh, for bevel gears, for shafts, also, but also for system calculation in kisses. So, what's new? Um, for gear calculation, we have uh, several new topics. For example, the calculation of asymmetric teeth or asymmetric gears. Um, then we have new the calculation of force excitation uh, within contact analysis to evaluate uh, uh, to evaluate noise, noise and vibrations. Then we have uh, um, we have expanded our um, our FE calculation of uh, root stresses. Now you can also perform a 3D tooth root calculation. And there are also some, uh, let's say, smaller new things. Uh, for example, the twist due to manufacturing when you perform generation grinding. So I'm going to go uh, point by point and show you where to find these things in Kisoft. Uh, and I will start with the cylindrical gear pair module. So I double click. And maybe one thing you will notice um, inside the reference profile, we have actually uh, put both reference profiles for, for so for both gears now in one window. This was uh, one of the wishes from our customers because before you had to change, you could see only the reference profile of gear one, so you had to change. Uh, uh, for the second gear to enter the data, but now you can actually see simultaneously uh, both uh, reference profiles. Asymmetric gears. Um, in order to enter an asymmetric toothing, uh, the first thing you want to do is to activate this functionality, and this you will find in the module-specific settings inside Kisoft, and you can see actually here at the end we have a new checkbox for asymmetric gears. So I activate it, press enter, and you can actually see that the interface dynamically changed. Um, we have here the possibility now to enter the, the pressure angle for the left and right flank separately. But you will also see that within the reference profile, you can actually now enter for the left and right side uh, the reference profiles separately for each gear. So that's quite a nice feature now. We will do together now an example. I will enter module 2. I'll have a different pressure angle left and right. So I'll have on the left side 15 degrees, pressure angle on the right side 25 degrees. I will calculate the center distance automatically. I will enter some t number of teeth for the pinion 19, maybe for the gear 31. So we will enter also some kind of tooth width, maybe five millimeters. And the first thing I want to do is I want to calculate only geometry. We'll focus a bit later on on the strength. So I have just deactivated the rating tab. So now we're performing only a geometric, geometry calculation. 
Also, I would like to initialize the root radius coefficients. I want to use maximum root radius for both flanks. So I'll just press this sizing button and we have now um, basically sized the maximum possible uh, root radius. And now I can actually press calculate. You can see that the asymmetric gear calculation is currently in a beta phase. So should also be a bit careful when interpreting the results. And also if you see that there are some, uh, maybe there are some inconsistencies or something is missing or some error message pops up, um, it would be nice if you could also inform us about this. So this is something really new now. Also, another thing is you will get warnings uh, separately for the left and for the, length, uh, for the right flank. Uh, so it means, for example, you could have an undercut, but in order to understand for which flank is this uh, warning, is it for the left or for the right, we first show you a, a pop-up message that, look, all these warnings are um, considering now the, uh, the, the left flank. OK, so I'll just press OK, and I hope that I get some geometry. You can see that we have here an asymmetric gearing. It's uh, quite popular uh, in the aviation industry. Uh, we've seen uh, several customers and, uh, who, who do these kind of things, and the goal is actually um, to maximize the performance of the gearing, especially um, increase uh, safety properties or, let's say, torque capacity of a gearing. Another nice thing is for this asymmetric uh, gear calculation, it's the extraction of the tool profile. So we have here the graphic for the manufacturing. So you can actually see now that we have a basic rack with a um, different pressure angle on left and a right flank. You can also see the generating cuts for gear one, how this gearing is then being produced. Currently, this feature is only available for final machining. So we currently cannot consider grinding allowances or several manufacturing steps, but we're working on this. <clears throat> now, if we, if we activate also the rating tab, yes, you can perform a strength calculation also for asymmetric teeth. It's, of course, based on the ISO 6336, and for the, uh, for, for the flank safety, you can really apply the standard for the flank safety. For the root safety, uh, we, are using, uh, uh, we are using a dissertation from Mr. Langheinrich, and uh, it basically it's a combination of uh, uh, ISO method and of FE calculation. Um, I can enter here now some power data. Um, I'll just add maybe one kilowatt. It's rather a small gear, module two. Um, speed, 1,500 rounds per minute. And actually, I can now press calculate. We still get these messages because of the undercut, so I'll just skip through them. And now you can see the safety results for root and flank safety. And actually, also, what's actually also interesting is that you could now change the direction of rotation of the gearing. You could now say that I will rotate now counterclockwise. So I just activate now the left flank, press calculate, and you can have a look that the safety values will change. You can see now we have a, a significant drop in the flank safety. Um, if we <clears throat> rotate counterclockwise. So much about asymmetric teeth. So this, this is quite a nice feature uh, in the new release. The next topic is force excitation. And I will open now example number one from our classic examples. So just load it example number one. And if we run now, Contact analysis, press calculate. Then you will see that within the graphics for contact analysis, you can see here the transmission error, which you probably already know. We use this to minimize, um, to minimize noise and vibration excitation. But now we have additionally 
a graph for the force excitation. So these are the forces. Also, you can see here the absolute values. It's uh, maybe a matter of taste. Uh, with which parameters do you work? Is it the transmission error or is it the, the real force? But what, what we know is that um, uh, with the force excitation, you can really compare quite well uh, different size of, uh, of, uh, of um, a gear variance in respect to noise. And uh, so this is like, like an addition for the evaluation of noise. And what you could also do, for example, is you could press on the save button and I could just save this image as a text file and they, I just call it force, um, save it. And now I could just open it from my desktop. And now you can see we have here basically a text file with, with all the values. It's basically the same graph that you have seen in Kisoft. And you could use this data now, for example, to uh, perform further calculations within a um, um, multi-body dynamics tool, if you want. Or you can see you can just basically transfer this data also to uh, other, other programs. So that's quite a nice feature. And this is available not only for cylindrical gears, but also for planetary gears and for uh, bevel gears. So the next topic is the GDA exchange format. It's actually the gear data exchange format according to VDI standard 2610. It's from the year 2014 and the idea uh, was basically to simplify data exchange, for, for example, uh, fr from, um, from a calculation to uh, manufacturing or to measurement. So it's basically a data format for gears, for cylindrical gears that you could use, for example, to transfer to a, to, to a machine or, or to a measurement device. And for that, you also need to uh, go to the module specific settings and activate this uh, GDE export format. I just confirm it with the enter button. I can now press calculate and you will find within our special reports the GDE export. So this might not look very nice for a human eye, but it uh, looks very nice for the machine because the machine don't knows then basically which row stands for module and this is all standardized uh, export. So this should simplify your data transfer uh, from KISOF to, um, to your manufacturing or to your measurement system. <clears throat> Another thing I would like to show you um, I will load again the example number one, a fresh one. Uh, we have added a new modification. Um, it is the so-called twist due to manufacturing. And why is it interesting? If you have helical gears, I will generate now a helical gear with a helix angle of 20 degrees. My center distance will now change, of course. So I have to deactivate this button, press calculate. Now we have a helical gearing. So if you add a modification, and typically it's a, it's a crowning. So I'm just, I will just add here a lead mod, uh, uh, um, a flank line modification crowning, let's say maybe of um, 10 micrometers. Press calculate. <clears throat> the thing is, if you manufacture uh, this crowning with the typical uh, grinding machine, for example, generation grinding, then what happens at the end is due to this helix angle and all these axial offsets, uh, you will have at the end something like a twist in the topology. I can actually show you now under graphics, geometry 3D, the modification itself. You can see it's a typical crowning, nothing special. Um, but for this, I can now add a special type of modification. I just press plus button and add the so-called twist due to manufacturing for generation grinding. And the value, <coughs> excuse me, the value for this twist should be the same as for the crowning. And what you get are as, as a result is the twist due to manufacturing of this crowning. So if I press calculate now, 
you can see that you get in the result the values for the twist and this is, let's say, quite a, quite a handy function. At the end, how does your modification look like? I go back to geometry, modifications, gear one, and you can actually see that this is this typical manufacturing twist. So if you would be, you remember when we were looking along the tooth width, we should be having a crowning. So basically something like this, but at the end, do it to manufacturing process, you get uh, let's say something like an eccentric crowning, which is different for a different diameter. So this is this is quite a nice feature now. Another thing I would like to show you is um, is the calculation of root stresses with finite element method. So I just activated. Uh, uh, this calculation here. So what does it do now? In addition, we used to have only 2D FE calculation. The motivation behind it was if you have special uh, tooth forms, like for example, deep tooth form, or if you have a complex root shape or, or a grinding notch, um, and then the question is, if the if the standard, for example, the ISO 6336 standard for cylindrical gears, if, if it, whether it gives realistic results. And for that, we have added a possibility to verify the root stresses with a finite element method. We have an integrated tool for this calculation, so you don't need to have a FE, external FE program. We deliver it together with our software. And now we have also added the option 3D uh, calculation. So 3D FM. In order to save some time, I have provided you here a small screenshot. So you can see now, um, you can see the mesh itself and you can also see the force concentration uh, on one hand on the pitch circle right here, but also in the root area. So these are the results. And yeah, with the help of this, you can actually evaluate whether the method you're using, the analytical method is uh, giving you realistic results for the root stresses. And this is um, also quite a nice uh, new feature. <clears throat> Last but not least, uh, I would like to also show you um, the new calculation within um, the so-called uh, gear body deformation calculation, which is, by the way, also done with our uh, finite element method. So we have here an example under various. I just double click gear body deformation example number one. And the new feature we have added here is the possibility um, to calculate uh, gear bodies where you have uh, uh, where you have basically an angled uh, configuration. So you can see that there is an angle here for this gear rim. And so why is it so important? Um, this and this element here has a stiffness. And um, uh, sometimes you need to consider this gear body stiffness in order to, um, uh, well, first of all, uh, have a realistic bending line of your shaft. You can see here, there's the shaft. So you could, for example, generate the stiffness matrix of this gear body and then import it within the shaft calculation. And this stiffness, of course, then has an influence also on your contact pattern. And uh, this will also influence your choice of modification uh, of modifications for the um, uh, for the modification sizing. Um, and also, what we have had added here is a preview function. You can see it's now straight. So if I want this rim to be under an angle, I could just set an inclination coefficient, let's say, of 0.7. This is why I like this preview button because it really shows you now the configuration. And at the end of the day, you can then uh, press calculate and it will generate you on one hand the stiffness matrix of this element, but it will also, um, it will also um, uh, show you within our FE tool Salome the deformation, how this gear, gear rim deforms. And with this, I am done with my part. So I would like to give the word now to Mr. Langhart. I will change now the presenter. And from my side, I would like to wish you a nice day. Okay, so
Okay, so uh, hello from my side and welcome to the second part of the news in the beta release 2018. Um, I will first start with a gear topic as well, with the bevel gear, as Ilya already mentioned before. I will show you that, then I will also show you about shafts and other machine elements, and finally also pieces. So in the bevel gear, what is new? Um, especially new is that in the ISO committee, currently a new standard for scuffing is evaluated, which is uh, much more precise than the current one. And KISSOFT, which is uh, working actively in the, in the ISO committee, already has now a draft available of that standard. Here, I just opened the sample uh, of the bevel gears. So as a sample uh, from the ISO um, directly, and we can find here on the rating, we can find calculation method scoffing. We can find the new draft ISO 10,320. So if I uh, select these, or actually just according to calculation method, then I will get, by the calculation, I will get the um, contact temperature, which is the, the main uh, parameter for scoffing. And currently I have a bevel gear uh, active. It means there is no contact temperature introduced by mashing on the pitch cone, as we can see here in this line C. Yeah. But whereas if we join, change to a hypoid gear, so if we change to a hybrid gear, we can see a different situation. We can see that at the pitch cone, there is also some temperature introduced by mashing. It means this is the lengthwise sliding, which is generated through the hypoid. So this is one of the main new features in bevel gears. Um, and of course, if you want to try on that, uh, you can do this in this case of beta or then actually in the KISS soft uh, 2018 release. Okay, but now I will switch from the gears, I will switch to the news in the shafts calculation. I just open now a empty shaft calculation and you can see on first glance, we really reworked the handling with shaft editor, with shaft modeling. This is a really new layout, uh, what you can see. So you can see, for example, that we have a uh, uh, paper in background given, which uh, gives the user a very good impression of his current sizes. And um, this grid helps you to orientant, orientate yourself about sizes and lengths of the cylinder elements. You can see this toolbar here, which lets you, let you have much quicker handling. You can see the element box where you can um, select the um, elements or notch effects even quicker. Then we also have in the elements tree, here we have an overview selection, what you can uh, choose to just see uh, individual um, either geometries, forces, and so on. And last but not least, we also have the possibility now in KISSOFT to uh, read in a background drawing, which allows you to um, see the shaft which is maybe already existing. I just open our sample. So, and in this sample, uh, there is just an assembly drawing is already done and the engineer would like to um, remodel this shaft in, in KISSOFT. So, with the import of this background drawing, this is really easy. Then the next step, he will choose from the element box, just the cylinders. In this case, I add five cylinders. And also a new feature is of KISSOFT release 2018 that you can drag with the grip points, you can drag the cylinders. So um, 
I just do this now uh, visually. And actually, to be honest, I like this functionality. It gives me a really uh, quick uh, modeling of this of this shaft. Of course, this is just now done by eye. Of course, I can do it then also more precise with the numbers on any time. This is as you are used to do this up to now. But still, within some seconds, I already have this shaft modeled. So, and this is really very quick. So, for those of you who know KISO for maybe more than 10 years, you will remember that this functionality existed already earlier. So Kisoft had this functionality actually very early already. Um, and now we are happy to, to have it back. As a next uh, nice feature in the shaft calculation, I would like to show you the handling of coaxial shafts, although this has improved. So if you have a coaxial shaft as here, for example, um, shifted transmission shaft. So, and typically you will see this shifted transmission uh, consists of very many um, separate shafts. And just to get a very easy overview, I can click now on these triangles here in the corner and I can, for example, fold up all elements. It means I purely see the shafts. And furthermore, if I want to check maybe or if I want to work on a single shaft, I can right click on that. I can show only this shaft. So now I can work on any details on that and with the same uh, right click, I can display all shafts. It means I can see again the complete uh, shaft system. And I also think this is a very uh, nice functionality. So this is for shafts. Um, I will continue. I will continue now with the next machine element. As you know, KISSoft handles actually all all the machine elements in a transmission and also springs are one of these machine elements. And now I show you the new spring type. It's a conical compression spring. So as you know, the cylindrical compression springs, um, they have typically a characteristics, characteristics of forced travel like this, so, which is straight. And the specialty now of the conical compression springs is that the characteristics is um, hard, is, is strongly progressive. And this is a very good thing for the engineer. The engineer can now modify these characteristics due to his current needs in the design. So for example, as he has an external diameter between 50 and getting up to 100 on 105. So he is able to modify the design of this spring. I just give a different diameter here. And you will see that the characteristic strongly changed and so the engineer is able to modify the properties of the spring exactly on his needs. And this is um, a very nice property of the conical compression spring. And this is also available then in the coming release. Before I leave uh, from KISSOF to KISSUS, I would like to show you also something which we uh, currently implemented, but we will not publish in the next release. Uh, but I'm, um, I'm glad to show it to you. And it's also available on request for testing purpose. It's the Chinese language. So Chinese language is available in KISSoft for user interface and for reports. 
so and due to my lack of Chinese language uh, I have to guess about the the button and the question uh, but you can see that the reports are already very far uh, available in Chinese language this is something what is needed for interact for international acting companies uh, if you have sites um, in Asia you will need to communicate in Chinese language and again uh, in case of this will be available um, only on request uh, so please don't hesitate to ask for it but it will not be published yet so with that I will leave on KISSoft on the machine elements I will go to KISSUS as you know KISSUS is our tool for system calculations it means transmissions where we can handle um, gears shafts and bearings within one calculation and here I would like to show you um, from the application side uh, two points in bevel and hyperweight gears we added in the uh, templates you know cases works in the uh, philosophy that you can enter templates uh, these two functionalities it's the bevel gear displacements and it's the gems or the interface to the gems software which is the Gleason software so I first show you on the bevel gear displacements if you added this template to the to your cases model you will find here the displacements of the pinion and ring gear or pinion and wheel uh, and these data E P and G as the angle s or Sigma uh, these values are needed for a contact analysis um, and also for the rating actually of the current contact pattern so this is now implemented for the release 2018 and this is also needed then for the second functionality which I want to show you this is the GEMS interface I also already added this template the GEMS interface and so the GEMS interface actually um, as you know the, the background of this is that uh, Kisoft as you know belongs to Gleason company and with this um, of course now we have a possibility to create a loop between the system calculation in Kisus and the very detailed analysis in GEMS which is a uh, bevel and hyperweed manufacturing software so what happens is that these data which are calculated from a from a system it means these um, misalignment which we just see in bevel displacements they are transferred to gems gems then actually calculates the uh, finite element analysis and the user finally is able to import the results from the gems analysis so and finally then to evaluate the graphs in KISSUS so if we now want to check on a the drive side I've, I, I created here four and four load cases four for drive drive and four for coast uh, mode if I want to check the contact pattern of this bevel gear set I can easily now see this in KISSUS if I want to check on the uh, light load maybe 25% of the load I can check whether so whether I also like the, the contact pattern on these conditions so the engineer can now um, do the evaluation also in KISSUS and this is actually a nice feature okay okay so this is about the interface and data exchange to the between the KISSUS and the GEMS software as a next feature of the application side I would like to show you the uh, model analysis which is now available uh, with this button 
it means the dynamic calculations they are available by this button now and so the user is able to do a model analysis directly in the in cases as well and as you know then the evaluation also is um, quite easy to do we have an animation which shows us the uh, couplet couplet vibrations uh, between the the parts we can see here mainly the axial uh, vibration but it's as you can see by the rotation of the pinion it's also coupled by the mesh so and this is available for uh, the number of eigen modes which I just selected as five which gives me a good impression about the different eigen modes and whether I maybe need to check on the operating speed uh, not to have an operating speed in an in an uh, eigenfrequency of the system. Okay, so KISSIS is not only application, KISSIS also means modeling. And modeling is an important part. Um, and KISSIS has very many freedoms uh, to uh, model um, very uh, special, specialized or, or customized uh, points. But modeling sometimes needs also programming. And programming is not uh, maybe uh, very comfortable for all of the users. And we also improved the modeling for some points by functionalities. Some of these functionalities I would like to show you. I would like to show you two functionalities. The first functionality is how to model a power split. So a typical configuration is that you have one uh, pinion and you want to transfer the torque uh, by two intermediate gears. So I will just add the uh, view here. So we have this configuration now. So we have the pinion driving by the two intermediate gears to the um, uh, final drive. And we can see in the kinematics diagram, we can see the two, um, the two uh, intermediate gears actually, but we can see only one of these is active. So typically the user now wants to apply the torque split and this means up to now this means programming in the new functionality in 2018 it's a simple it's a simple function so and the user can just define uh, that he wants to split the power ratio for 50% and 50% and we can see now also the second strand gets active so we can also see in the gear pair calculation that both of these strands are now active. So this is one uh, nice um, assistance for the user to model um, power splits. Also a um, functionality or calculation which is applied in systems very often uh, is load spectrum and we also continuously improve load spectrum calculations in KISSIS. One of these functionality I would like to show you now and it means typically that uh, in a load spectrum in a, in a load spectrum the user would like to add or to vary not only torque and speed he also would like to vary for example an radial force in this sample here in the shaft number three there is a radial force as a centrical load is defined and uh, this radial load shall be varied also within the load spectrum how to do that we go to load spectrum we go to definition dialog 
Uh, but first, I would like to show you the variable. Okay. So I will go to load spectrum now. I will show, I will do the definition dialog, and I just want to add uh, one column. So this one column, this shall be the uh, column where the user wants to uh, vary the radial, radial force. So, and this radial force actually is given here, is given here by the uh, shaft three and centrical load. And the property name is Fx. So, and now the load spectrum is created and you can see here, now I can just enter the frequency, the torque and speed as is as typically applied, but now also the variation in the radial force, which actually is here on the final drive. So also this dialogue, which we have seen before, this is a new uh, dialogue, which makes it much easier for the user to create any, actually any parameters uh, into the load spectrum. Okay, so these are two points which are important for KISSIS modeling. So you see, actually we uh, created and implemented many functionalities uh, in the new release. For you, we are happy with the new release. We are looking forward for it. Uh, I hope you are looking forward for it too. So with this um, presentation, actually, I um, come close to the end of our web demo of today. Uh, of course, we would like to invite you to the Hanover Fair. Hanover Fair is on 23rd, 27th of April, and you will find us in the booth A64 in the hall 22. And this is the place where we officially release the new uh, Kiss Soft and Kisses 2018, and you are uh, welcome to come to the booth and to discuss with us and to check out more details on the on the release. Uh, if you're interested in uh, tickets uh, for the Hanover Fair, just let us know. We have a bundle of free tickets for you ready. So just send us an email to info at kissoft.ag. Also, I would like to mention uh, that you have the possibility to register for our newsletter so that you keep updated with our news. Or also, we have many uh, information for you ready on the social media as LinkedIn and YouTube. And also, this presentation of today you will find on YouTube soon so that you can check out again for the details together if uh, with the beta release if you want to do so. So here with, we are at the end of our presentation of today. We thank you very much for your attention and we're looking forward to meet you in Hanover. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.